Hi everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we are going to build a winter scene that's very peaceful and serene using the new pine tree stencils from Waffle Flower Crafts. Let's start out by taking a closer look at the pine trees stencil. The main body of the stencil has these three openings to create three different pine trees by ink blending. You also have these additional pieces here. These are kind of like the pine tree uh, center parts. These can be used as masks or for adding dimension to your ink blended pine trees. Then you have two these two little pieces here as well as these kind of cut edges on the body. Those can all be used to create kind of a snow banks or snow slopes. I'm going to start by actually ink blending my snow. I'm going to place down the stencil here. I'm going to use the edge of the main body of it. Then I'll put my kind of tree negative back inside its matching tree just to kind of make it easier to mask off that part of the stencil so I don't have to worry about getting any of my blue ink down there. And then I'll just ink blend with a tumbled glass right along the edge there of that stencil to create kind of the look of that snow mound. Now that I have that ink blended, I'm just going to take a little bit more of that tumbled glass and just ink blend at the very bottom. And now I'm going to move on to the sky. First, I'll reposition my stencil here, again using one of the cut edges to create the look of a slope. And I'll be really focusing on ink blending this upper part here, kind of the top of the card, because that will actually create not only my kind of back slope of snow, but it'll also allow me to ink blend the sky. I'm starting out with a gray. This is weathered wood. Just ink blend that gray down. And then I'll finish up with faded jeans. Ink blend a little gradation here just to kind of give this really kind of um, stormy, almost about to snow looking kind of sky. So now that I have that finished ink blended, I'm ready to move on to my trees. So I'm going to position one of my pine trees here and then I'm going to mask off all around it just so I don't get any of my green that I'm ink blending anywhere on my card front. I'm going to start with evergreen bow and just ink blend pretty much all over this tree. I'll be very light though when I get to the trunk because I'm going to actually uh, color that in with some brown Copics later. Now I'm going to move on to my darker shade, which is pine needles, and just ink blend kind of the bottom half of that. Just add a little gradation. Now move on to a different tree, place it on the right side of my card front. Once I get that in place, I'll then tape off or mask off all around that tree just again so I don't get any of this ink, any of this green ink anywhere I don't want it. And I'll start again with evergreen bow, then I'll move to pine needles to give it a little gradation. And then once I finish that, I'm done ink blending for all my trees and actually my background. I'm now going to move on to just quickly Copic coloring with a couple of browns, the trunks of the trees. I have a light and then a darker just to add a little shadow. I also want to note that I did thoroughly dry my card front before I placed it in my Misty here because I'm going to do some heat embossing and I want to make sure all that ink blending is set so my embossing powder doesn't stick to it. I applied some anti-static powder and positioned a sentiment from the oversized piece stamp set. Then I just inked it up in Versamark ink and stamped it. And then I will pour on some silver embossing powder, tap off the excess, and then heat set with my heat tool. Now that I finished my emboss sentiment, I'm going to actually reposition that sentiment a little bit to the left this time. I found it's easier to kind of position it offset if you line it up with the original stamp sentiment and then just slide the stamp over a little bit. And I then stamped that offset sentiment in weathered wood just to create a little shadow so that um, piece is easier to read. I'm now going to move on to adding snow to the tree. So I'm going to grab my stencil here, line it back up with the tree, and then slide it up so I create a little gap above each one of the tree branches. Then I'll grab the negative, slide it down from that opening. So both of these are a little offset and that will create a little gap here between the two stencils, between the negative and the the opening of the tree that will allow me to add this paste here. This is from Fun Stamper's Journey. It's a white modeling paste and I'm going to apply this over the two stencils to fill in that little gap that I created on top of each one of the tree branches and that's going to create the look of snow resting on top of those branches. You can see here after I applied all that paste I then removed my mask 
And now I'm going to grab some more of that paste and apply some more to the kind of body of the tree. This is just to kind of build it up a little bit, make it a little bit snowier. Now you can definitely use lots of different products out there to do this technique to create snow on these trees. Um, a lot of them are either called mousse or um, different names of modeling paste. Just go out, you might even have something in your stash already. So now that I've applied the paste, I'm going to just sprinkle on this glitter here just to make it look really sparkly and pretty. And now, after I've finished that tree, I'm going to move on to the next one and just repeat this process. So again, I will grab the stencil, place it uh, slightly above where I ink blended the tree. Then I'll grab the negative as well and place it a little bit below. And by offsetting the negative and the opening, that creates a little gap kind of above each one of the branches for the uh, paste to kind of fill in and create that look of snow. So once I finished kind of doing it on the uh, branches, I again am adding it to the kind of the body of the tree just to again make it look snowier and just fill it out. I think this really kind of pushes it to it makes it look a little more realistic. After I applied the paste to the body, I then just sprinkled over my uh, glitter and then just tapped off my excess. And now I'll just set this aside to dry, but this card is basically done. It takes about maybe 45 minutes to dry. And here you can see I can hold it to the camera how sparkly and pretty this card is. I also love how this winter scene came together. I think it's so cool that we were able to make it with just one stencil and the peace on earth sentiment I think just works really well because it's just a really peaceful, serene winter scene. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you'd like any more information on the products I use, please check out the links below in the description. And if you like this video, I'd so appreciate it if you left me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.